Hey, 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 how you doing? It's October 20th, 2023. Almost, not quite, but almost 9.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'm running some morning errands, which included dropping some packages off at Staples. And now I'm heading up to pick up some products that I'm going to pack and bring back to Staples. Tis the season, Q4. But anyways, I just saw this couple, older couple too. So like, maybe it's a new relationship, but they're old. And they're just sitting in their car for the whole time I'm there when I get there and they're arguing. And then I hear the, the window rolls down and I'm packing, unpacking my boxes so I can kind of hear them. And then I come back and I have my sunroof open when I'm going set my GPS and I can hear them again still arguing and it's been I mean 10 minutes at least they were there when I got there they're still there when I left so let's just say it's 10 minutes total it's probably longer and then it was giving me flashbacks of another thing when I used to be living in the ghettos when I lived in Pawtucket Rhode Island on the Central Falls line in an old mill beautiful lofts but the walls are very thin and you can hear everything that your neighbors were up to and I was really naive about how much people so I'm single let's just start there I'm not in a relationship and when I'm in a relationship and people don't want to communicate and they want to yell I'm like, all right, let's shut it down. Let's talk about this when you're not yelling at me and trying to say hurtful things. And I recently was listening to the Guys We Eft podcast. I should say the real name, but for some reason it gets flagged online. And they were saying it's healthy to yell at each other. And I... I disagree with quite a bit they say, but I, I like their accountability aspect, but it is not healthy to yell at one another. So think about like a child. Would you say it's healthy to yell at a child? No. And so if you learn negotiation skills when you're a child because people aren't yelling at you, then you grow up learning those same techniques if you're yelling at people and you think yelling is okay then most likely either you lived in a hypocritical state where people didn't yell at children but then say it's okay when you're an adult or they did yell at children and then you've rationalized it out that it's okay that yelling is a thing now having emotions is okay but whether you're male or female you have to understand or you don't have to do anything I would suggest that you understand that those chemicals that are released in your body are your responsibility so you can't control the chemicals that get released but you can control your reaction to those I think long term you can control the chemical releases through different practices diet exercise health and rewiring your brain in a positive direction but let's just say for the sake of this argument you're not in control of your emotions but you are in control of how you react to your emotions so there I'm listening to those two and they're 10 minutes she's complaining to him that they went to Staples first and they're like and I don't know the full story so maybe they need something that they don't have uh that they need for Staples. But she's like, why did we come to Staples first when we should have gone to here first? And he's like, well, we're just here. It's not a big deal. We'll do this first. And it's just going on. And in my mind, I'm just like, logically, you would have already been out of Staples and said you're having a 10 minute argument. Now, obviously it's not about this argument. It's about other things. So she either feels unheard or that he's controlling or that he thinks she's controlling or they're fighting for position in the relationship, whatever it may be. But pragmatically, they're in a 10 minute argument over something that 
they would already be on to the next location had they not argued and it gave me flashbacks of my neighbors and I remember the dude would come home from work he'd barely even get in the door I'd hear him put his stuff down like his like his bag and stuff and like he'd be there and, and not even five minutes would come by and she would come home in the door and she would open the dishwasher and be like you didn't unpack the dishwasher and he would say I I just got home and you know they're, they're clean so we could just pull them out of there to eat on whatever and they would go through a two hour if not more argument throwing stuff breaking stuff threatening to kill each other names violence verbal scars that you can't take back every every old story in the book coming back and the whole time I would just hear it I would just think it takes it does if it like she's like it takes two minutes to empty was part of her argument I'm like okay if it takes two minutes to empty just empty it so like if it's not that big of a deal she's like it's not that big of a deal and I if I was him I would have been like well if it's not that big of a deal just do it obviously it is that big of a deal <laughs> but I and then again once again this is not about the the dishwasher it's about a bigger thing but the but what but people don't practice stoicism with female or male whereas they're a little bit different when when something happens they never reflect on it so she was willing to do a two hours of destruction to their relationship and he was willing to participate in those two hours of destruction and the catalyst for it was emptying the dishwasher so if it was truly about the dishwasher it takes less than two minutes to unload and then you're back on with your life so this is obviously about like control, doing what I say, I'm in charge, or who, who knows what the bigger issue is. But they're looking looking to get into arguments with one another. Um, I'm at my destination, but I just thought it was interesting. Seven minutes. I just thought it was interesting. Um, where do you stand on this? I stand from the fact that if you're an adult, you are responsible for the chemicals your body releases and how you act with those chemicals and that uh, I draw a hard line with yelling at each other and if one person is emotionally up and the other person says hey you're a little emotionally up right now and I think I would love to discuss this with you but it's got to be when you're not at you know this chemical peak because we're going to we're having a a, a a discussion of past traumas. You're you're yelling your past traumas at me, and my your past traumas are not me. I didn't do your past traumas, and vice versa. Um, but where do you stand on this? Because I've heard people, I I've confronted people about this, and like you're trying to control my emotions. And I talked to every one of my girlfriends, and they said, stop trying to control my emotions. And I was like, well. So everybody's saying be abusive. It's okay to be an abusive relationship as long as you're the verbal abuser. That's what I hear. So I've ended those relationships. But I guess if two people are genetically incapable of controlling their prefrontal cortex, is then uh, this is how they would have to dispute resolute. And if one person's in control of their prefrontal cor intercepting with their prefrontal cortex and the per other person isn't, you are basically asking somebody to like, well, if you can't slam dump a basketball, then I can't be with you. And because it's a genetic component of, you know, their inabilities that's unseen. And you will never know if you can see it or unsee it. So at that point, you're just discriminating, which is fine. You should discriminate and prejudice because... You don't want to be in a, in a situation like that. That's just me. Where, where do you stand on that? Uh, leave a message below, and I'll. And I'll uh, this is a topic I'd like to explore more in more in depth.